This is the basal classic, the basal varios, and the basal vampire. These are the three kinds of uh, partially threaded implants that are present in our catalog. These implants have different usages in different case scenarios, and we will be studying these in the later slides. And in the compressive uh, side, when we see we have two implant designs, one is the basal tornado and one is the basal pros. Right? This is the basal pros. This is the only rough surface basal implant that is present. Right? Uh, the uh, the uh, use case will be also studied in the later slides. So now we will we'll be studying these implants one by one. The first we will be studying the partially threaded implants, the basal cortical screws. Okay, this is also the Bahubali of dental implants. Let me tell you, this implant is such a wonderful uh, implant device that uh, the basal implantologists have invented. The it it can be done in almost every case, every case whether there is bone available in width or not, bone, every bone quality, uh, every kind of situation. When the uh, in fact in the mandible when there is residual resorption is still the uh, mandibular nerve. In that case also this implant can be easily placed. We will be seeing this in the following slides. Okay, so the basal cortical screws, like I have told you, there are three designs present. First is the basal classic, the basal varios, and basal vampire. The use case is similar, the procedure is similar, the protocol is totally similar. Uh, what does difference is there is different is in the threading profile. Okay, the classic design is for D0, D1 bone. The very dense bone, we use the basal classic. When the bone quality is of, is of D2 uh, to D4, we can use the basal varios. And if we have very osteoporotic bone, very, very osteoporotic bone like D5, D4, D5 bone, then we go for the vampire, bone, vampire implant. Okay, the threat profiles uh, on these implants are very different and these these uh, implants provide increasing uh, order of anchorage as we go from this implant to this implant. As we can see in the threads, this is the cortical threads are present in the classic implant. And in the various design, there are cortical implants as well as the cortico-compressive implants are present. The, uh, these in, ad in addition to cortically engaging the implant, uh, when the bone density is very less, these provide lateral compression to the bone, which will, will which will then osseodensify the bone in this region and increase the anchorage. And in the vampire design, we have Whitworth threads. They are a dual thread design. There are two threads that are running in the implant and these provide double the anchorage. Like in the normal, what the classic implant provides, the anchorage of vampire is ap approximately double that. So in very uh, less dense bone, uh, we will use the vampire implant. Okay, and uh, now we will be seeing the distinguishing features of the basal implant. Uh, this is the basal cortical screw and these are the sizes that are available. We can appreciate the diameter, the minimum diameter available is 3.6 and maximum diameter is 5.5. That is so normal. In conventional implantology, we also have such diameters. But when you come to the length, you will see the length is minimum of 10 millimeter and up to 29 millimeter. This is a very distinguishing feature of basal implants because we are engaging the basal cortical bone that uh, sometimes will be very deep to the first cortex. So the length of the implant required is very high. Second distinguishing feature is the, it's a single piece design. There is no prosthetic connections. The implant is totally made from one piece of titanium. Right? And other is a smooth surface. The implant is of smooth surface design. There is no polish, uh, there is no surface treatment done in basal implant. And the threads are only at the apex. That is why these are a partially threaded design. The, the, the thread of the implants are only at the apex. Why so? We will see in the following slides. First, we will come to the smooth surface. The implants are whole sole made up of polished machine surface titanium. So what are the advantages? The advantages are there is no risk of peri-implantitis because of smooth surface, even there is some bone losses there, the exposed surface will be smooth and it will be self-cleansing. So there will not be any kind of peri-implantitis. Because of smooth surface, the implants can be done in diabetics also, right? The implants can be done in smokers also. 
because why because why so uh, because basal implants we engage the implant through osteofixation and in diabetic and smokers what is happening is the healing of the body the uh, becomes a little bit slower it becomes delayed so osteointegration is not able to take place because osteointegration we totally rely on the biology once again right in basal implantology we bypass the biology in uh, conventional implantology when we want the osseo integration to happen we, uh, we have to wait but in diabetics and smokers the osseo integration still might not happen even after waiting for 6 months and uh, le may lead to very painful failures for the patient also the basal implantology because of the partially threaded design right we can do in immediately after extraction and even in the case of periodontally infected teeth because of the smooth surface there is no chance that the infection will be carried forward towards the basal bone in rough surface when we pass the implant through the infected site what will happen is we will take the infection the pus everything that is there and these will all be transported towards the apex and towards the bone in which we are fixing our implants but because of the as a virtue of the smooth surface uh the implants can be done in infected sockets also both in extraction and delayed cases the reintegration of the implant is possible even if the implant is failed because of tech some technical errors we have not breached the second cortex and we have not engaged second cortex properly and the implant fails the same implant we can remove it and we can place after doing the performing then correcting the osteotomy and also even in the case of failures we can remove and replace the implant with a wider or lengthier implant if that is needed a very important note is the super power of the basal implant lies in the shaft or neck and its monoblock construction now you will ask a super power how can a implant have a super power so let me explain you this shaft of the basal implant the shaft is from the uppermost thread to the base of the abutment this is the shaft of the implant so the shaft of the implant is only 2 to 2.5 mm in diameter and it's made up of polished surface it's not surface treated then that uh, because of this the intraosseous placement and positioning and presence is not required this shaft does not need to be inside the bone at all this can be anywhere in the soft tissue and also because of the narrow diameter of the shaft the implant can also be bent so these are the two very important practical applications and uh, i will say achievements of basal implants because of the shaft we are able to bend the implant right we do we can place the implant anywhere the bone is present and we don't have to worry about the uh, prosthetic position because we can bend the implant to achieve paralyzation for prosthetic rehab in conventional implants we have seen lot of cases what happens is uh we uh, there is bone available but the angulation of the bone uh, if we place the implant in that bone the angulation is not prosthetically desirable and we have to go through a lot of headache to prosthetically rehabilitate the uh, patients uh, the oral surgery department have might have seen a, a lot of discrepancies with the prosthodontic department over this thing that when we place the implant in the available bone the prosthetic rehabilitation becomes very difficult and we have to go for custom milled abutment or cast departments but in basal implantology this problem is not present at all because uh, we can place the implant any position we like just engaging the basal cortex and then bend the implant to bring it in the prosthetically correct position like we can also see in this radiograph uh, this is a there is a very thin knife edge ridge present as you might be able to appreciate the ridge present is very narrow so in basal implant what we do is instead of doing the osteoplasty and then going to this bone we directly bypass the alveolar bone this is the alveolar bypass technique what we do is we start the osteotomy on the palatal aspect and then engaging the basal uh, basal cortical bone the shaft is present freely in the soft tissue so there is no problem uh, this creates in basal implantology in conventional implantology if the implant is exposed the implant will fail but in basal implantology this kind of failure is not seen so this is a super power of the basal implantology